Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for inviting me here. My name is Adam Junka and together with my research team, we perform analysis on clinically relevant biofilms with the special stress put on the biofilms formed in bones and in chronic wounds. Presently, we are well aware of fact that such specific features of biofilm as high tolerance to immune system and to antimicrobials make this multicellular community hard to eradicate from the niches it settles in. It concerns also the chronic wounds in which, independently from their etiology, whether those are burns, venous ulcers, bed sores or others, biofilm can develop to thrive and to lead to the health complications or even to the death of the patient. Antiseptics are one of the biofilm countermeasures applied in the management of biofilm related chronic wound infections. They are mostly applied to kill biofilm forming cells and some of them, thanks to the low surface tensions, are able to flush the biofilm together with clots and necrotic tissue out of the wound. Today, I would like to show you the data assessing those two parameters, killing force and ability to flush biofilm out with regard to the antiseptics containing low content of hypochlorous acid compared to antiseptics containing other antimicrobial substances, for example, polyhexanid or octanidin. In the publication re released last year by our team, we analyzed those parameters using variety of in vitro models from quite standard ones to more advanced ones resembling chronic wound environment. Our results indicated that during clinically relevant period of time, the hypochlorous acid antiseptic displayed very low antibiofilm activity comparing to the antiseptics containing, for example, polyhexanid. And such observation was a recurring one, regardless the species of pathogen forming biofilm. This phenomenon was confirmed in another work of our team, in which we observed that the majority of biofilm forming strains is completely resistant to the hypochlorous acid containing antiseptics in the spectrum of applied concentrations. Also, research published by the team of German scientists showed a similar trend. The antiseptic containing low chlorine contact were ineffective against major wound pathogens, Staphylococcus aureus and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Nevertheless, they were also non-cytotoxic to the cells forming wound bed. The another of antiseptics important parameter is ability to flush the biofilm out. It was tested in the Great Britain last year using device called drip flow reactor. As it can be seen, the ability of polyhexanid to remove biofilm was significantly greater comparing to the one displayed by microdacin antiseptic. At the same time, also my team performed analysis to check the potential of selected antiseptics to flush out the biofilm. The research was performed in the advanced device referred to as the Bioflux 2000 system. What we can see in this slide is the biofilm of Pseudomonas aeruginosa, the green area, exposed to the flow of water or hypochlorous acid-based antiseptic or polyhexanid-based antiseptic during 10 seconds of flow. The black areas show the places in which biofilm was flushed out. Our observation stay in line with those made by British research team showing that application of hypochlorous acid-based antiseptic translates in a less than 15%, while application of polyhexanid of several dozen percent of biofilm removal. Summarizing, the research performed by various research teams and using differentiated biofilm models showed that the wound solutions containing AT parts per million of chlorine display very low antibiofilm efficacy and a moderate ability to flush the biofilm out comparing it to other antiseptics. 
Such a data is of paramount meaning for all wound management professionals, considering the fact that mistreatment of wound biofilm may lead to serious patient's health complications. Thank you and feel free to ask me the questions using the addresses provided below. Thank you once more for attention.